Well, welcome into episode five of Routing 101. Um, I'm going to be talking about guide bushes. So if you've got a guide bush for your router and a straight cutter, then, then this is a video for you. We can use these um, guide bushes to make templates and make jigs for various um, applications. So if you can understand the relationship between your guide bush and your cutter, you can get an awful lot more out of your router than just edge profiling. So stay tuned while I set up. Okay, so if we can understand the relationship between the cutter we're using and the collet we've got installed, um, it opens up a whole new um, branch of operations regarding the use of templates. Templates which we can effectively make ourselves. So it doesn't matter whether we're using it for slots, for dados, for mortising, for cutting in hinges in a door or a door frame, or anything where we need to make an aperture, say a letterbox in a door, um, whatever it is, if we can understand this relationship between cutter and collet, we've just opened a brand new branch. And we can think of this collet like a little fence. Where we had the fence previously installed on the outside of the router, um, what we've done is we've fixed that fence at a set distance between the cutter and the work. Yeah? Now, the relationship between the collet and the cutter is a very simple formula. It's effectively this, the distance we're interested in, is the distance between the edge of the cutter and the edge of the collet. And that is half, because there's two at one on either side of the cutter, the difference between the cutter and the collet. So a 30mm um, collet with an 8mm cutter gives us a 22mm gap. 30 minus 8, 22mm. Half that on either side, so 11mm. So when we're making our jigs, the cutter's obviously going to cut our work, but we need to make our jig oversized or offset by that distance of 11mm. Obviously if we've got a bigger cutter in there, or a smaller cutter in there, that number will change. But if we can remember it's half the collet diameter minus the cutter diameter, we'll never go wrong. It doesn't matter whether it's millimetres or inches, if that was one inch and that was a quarter inch, then it would be three quarters inch of an inch divided by two or three eighths of an inch as a gap. So you can work it in either, either in period or metric. What I would say is if you're using a metric one, use a metric the other because the maths then becomes a very complicated, well it doesn't become complicated, but the, the accuracy becomes complicated in trying to do 0.35 of a millimetre when you're setting your jigs up. We'll go into that um, later on. Um, I'm using my biggest collet that I've got available for this jig. Okay, so uh, you just watched me cut these, um, these little strips I've marked out on this piece of MDF. The aperture that I want this template to be, now I want the final finish size of 30mm on this template. So what I need to do is to cut that using the cutter and guide combo that I've currently got, I need that 11mm offset. So what I've done is I've marked 11mm out, I've got this outer line that I can fix just some double stick tape, these little strips of MDF in and then run those round. Now if I wanted a 30mm on my final workpiece, so say a 30mm mortise, I'd need to mark 11mm out because the template needs to be 11mm bigger and then to use this method to cut the template I'd need to mark an, another 11mm so that my final template was here and then the final cut was here. Okay? And this principle works for every single jig we make. And it doesn't matter what, what the shape is, 
as long as we keep to that same principle, we'll never go wrong making a uh, template. And the, the process of making the template, you, you can see, is pretty simple. Okay, well that's basically the jig finish now. Um, the 30mm guide slides up and down in there quite nicely. There's a little bit of play, but it's, uh, it's not too bad. Um, I've made it for my largest guide bush because obviously now I can use my smaller guide bushes in there to give me a little bit more uh, movement for, for other cutters. And it's actually got an ulterior motive because what I can do now with this jig is use it in conjunction with the, the larger guide bush and say a quarter inch or six mil cutter to cut slots for an M6 bolt and then if I just swap over to a slightly larger cutter I can then put a counterbore in for the head so I can recess a, a sliding bolt. This is going to be handy later on if I want to put a sliding fence on, on a jig or even stops. So it'll be very handy when I'm making my small circle cutting jig, which will be up in a future video, and also to make a mortising jig with sliding fences and sliding stops. So uh, check those out later on. If you've liked what you've seen, then please do hit the subscribe button um, so you don't miss out on future and previous routing videos and all the other videos I've got on YouTube as well. And also check out the website, woodcraftbpw.com. I hope to see you again soon.